GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. The Sabercast, brought to you by Better Live, Then Dead, and now your hosts, Brayton Wilson and Ryan Wolf. And with that, we welcome you to the Sabercast, powered by Better Live, Then Dead, and the Gear Network. This is Season 3, Episode 4, entitled, Here We Go Again. You can hear us on BetterLiveThenDead.com, GearNetwork.com, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. I am Ryan Wolf, at WolfBLTV on Twitter, joined on phone by the man himself Brayton Wilson at BJ Wilson WJ buddy how you doing I'm I'm hanging in there I'm doing all right how about yourself I uh I understand that you are out enjoying yourself on a lovely little vacation while we do this yeah man it's uh the first time I've ever been to the Outer Banks I mean the weather Ooh. is the weather is the is the south you know it's it's gorgeous outside right now I think the temperature right now at time of recording is 72 but mm-hmm. we've got a downpour and it's been raining Ooh. on and off all day. So it's, you know, I'm just glad to be somewhere where it's warm. Granted, I say that and I saw that the temperature at my house in, in uh, Rochester this weekend is going to be 90 when we get home. So I guess that's, it's that old, that old joke, you know, when you, when you go somewhere and you come home and it gets really warm, you say, Oh, you brought the weather with you. Didn't you? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, that's, I guess what I'm going to kind of do, but yeah, man, it's, it's been nice. It's been, um, it's been much deserved, I think, working real hard in the in the nine to five and trying to work real hard with the Sabres. But, you know, as uh, again, this is our fourth episode of the podcast this year, but I feel like every time we're on here, we apologize because we haven't done enough this year. But to be quite honest, as you're going to find out again here, there's not really a lot to talk about with the Buffalo Sabres that we haven't already talked about because, again, it's the same old it's recycling coaches, it's upset players, it's hurt players, it's ineffective players. And then the Sabres are in the draft lottery again, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So trying to be as positive as possible, Brayton, but um, the outlook for the the Buffalo Sabres right now is is grim, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, it just there are still so many unanswered questions with this team going into this offseason. And the, I mean, the one question was answered, Yesterday, Wednesday, with the NHL draft lottery, we know what the Sabres will pick. They'll pick number one overall, and they'll have their choice of who they want to pick in a draft class that doesn't necessarily have a surefire number one, but a lot of people think that it's going to be Owen Power that will be uh, selected with the first overall pick. But, you know, we're, we're still waiting to see what Jack Eichel's status is with his herniated disc in his neck. We're still awaiting a situation where is he going to have surgery or not? Kevin Adams yesterday, of course, saying that the, the team is still not comfortable with them proceeding with allowing Jack Eichel to get a surgery that has never been done on an NHL yep. player. And we'll you know, definitely, and, and before you spoil the podcast and make this podcast yeah, yeah. five minutes long, I do want to mention here that we've got a lot of information regarding that in our three big things. So you're, you're doing a really good job of prefacing the podcast here. I appreciate it. <laughs> no worries. Um, I, I guess, I guess without giving away too much, just, you know, this off season still, I mean, we're not even, we're not even, you know, a month away from the draft or even the expansion draft. And there are still so many unanswered questions for the Sabres and general manager, Kevin Adams, that, um, you know, there's going to be plenty of time to talk about all these unanswered questions and to hypothetically come up with a bunch of solutions to maybe improve the team. But until then, I mean, we're, we're just kind of sitting here twiddling our thumbs, wondering what's next with this team that finished 31st place once again in the NHL standing. See, because as you mentioned, and I was going to mention this in just a moment, the Buffalo Sabres did win the draft lottery. They are picking first overall. There, there's a, a nice group of young, talented kids out there. But at one point in time, I mean, first off, let me just say this. If you don't know by now, the Buffalo Sabres were the worst team in hockey for the fourth time in eight seasons record-wise. They finished 15, 34 and seven. They had 37 points in 56 games. So they more than deserved or more than earned the number one overall pick. Uh, I guess if you want to look at it that way, but Brayton looking at it, I mean, you see, you mentioned a kid like, like Owen power and, and we can chat a little about this before we jump into the three, three big things. 
But you look at the plethora of left-handed, left-shot defensemen the Buffalo Sabres have have drafted over the past couple years, and you say to yourself, at what point do they go, we can't score goals, we need to draft offensive offensive talent. And if it comes down to a point where you've got a Dylan Cousins playing on the third line because you have so much talent, that's what we call a good problem to have. But again, um, I'm just gonna. I'll just preface this right now. The three big things we're talking about: Jack Eichel. We're talking about players looking to leave, and we're talking about where Buffalo goes from here. So clearly, it's going to be a kind of a dark and dreary episode here on the on the Sabercast. But um, before we get too deep into it, it's it's a um, it, it really just is a situation where again, dude, I feel like we're talking about the same thing every time we do a podcast. It's 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 rough and when it comes to writing over at, at dieBytheBlade.com for you over at WGR550.com. Again. I could take an article that I wrote two years ago, change the names in it, change the head coach's name, and it's the same exact thing. We're going through it again. And 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 to jump over to our three big things, talking about the biggest news story, bigger than the Sabres being bad, bigger than Don Granado, bigger than Ralph Kruger getting fired earlier this year, bigger than anything that Buffalo sports has dealt with in a very long time, Jack Eichel and the medical disconnect. Now, in his final media availability of the season, Brayton, Jack Eichel mentioned a disconnect between and himself. Uh, Elliot Freeman, Elliot Friedman went on to highlight the issue saying, quote, according to multiple sources, Eichel had a contentious exit interview with the organization. No one is commenting, but he's believed he's exploring on the advice of his medical team an artificial disc replacement in his neck. He goes on to say, I find it hard to believe Eichel isn't consulting the best of the best while Buffalo's retinence. Uh, I, 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 I I don't know the hell of the word I'm trying to say here. You guys know me by now. Uh, comes from an mm-hmm. artificial disc replacement lacking evidence of its effectiveness on elite level athletes. A relatively new phenomenon. As far as I could find, there are no examples of NHLers who have returned to play after having one. Uh, but Brayton, with that being said, clearly we know that there's a problem. And, and at this point, we're seeing across the board from multiple sources, high, low, and in between, that it looks like the most likely solution to this problem here is that Jack Eichel will be traded. Now, on on for for the pros of Jack Eichel being traded, for me, really quick, and I'll I want to hear what you have to say. The pros. Um, he still has five years left on an eight-year deal. He signed back in October uh, 2017. So there is a, a a a massive amount of time left for Jack Eichel to play for a new team. You'll be able to get a lot for him. He's an elite level player. You don't want to see him go, but the one thing that absolutely terrifies me is this wasn't a knee. This wasn't an elbow. This wasn't a wrist. This wasn't a a broken leg, broken arm, broken foot, broken jaw. This is a neck injury. And we know in professional sports and in hockey too, even more so neck and back injuries don't go away. They only get worse. So it's almost a situation where we're looking at Jack Eichel now is kind of like, I wouldn't necessarily say a ticking time bomb, but maybe like a countdown clock, but we don't know how much time is left on that clock. For me, it was don't trade Eichel. Are you crazy? To now I'm at the point where you're seeing things like artificial disc in his neck and, and all these things. And you wonder to yourself, okay, how much tread is left on the wheels essentially? He's in and take a hit and that could be it. Or he could go out ha- and have a, a back problem or a neck problem or whatever. And that could be it for him. Is that risk? You Are you willing to take that risk or do you trade him now and try to regain as much as you possibly can toward your 15th rebuild at this point? Well, I mean, aside from the injury, I think if there's any time that you're going to trade Jack Eichel, I mean, it has to be this off season, right? or at least before his no movement clause kicks in at the start of the 2022-2023 season, because then at that point, it could be a similar situation to a Taylor Hall where, you know, Jack Eichel holds all the cards in his hand and he can decide on where he wants to go and who he wants to get traded to. And then, you know, another team, you know, that is interested in acquiring him, they'd be able to pull that card where it's just, all right, well, Obviously, you need a need to trade Jack Eichel. So if you want to trade with us, here's what we're offering, and that's your best offer. If you don't want him, then no deal. So, you know, the the, the clock is ticking this off season at least as to a decision on what to do with Jack Eichel. Certainly, the injury is concerning. Uh, you know, an injury such as this is always a concern, no matter what you know what profession you are. You could be you know, work in construction, or you could be an NHL hockey player, and it's and it's always going to be a, a concern on the long term effect of a person. So, you know, if Jack Eichel wants this surgery, I mean, the Sabers should be allowed to, uh, you know, look into it as they have let him look into it. But 
you know, according to the CBA, it's the final decision of the team as to whether or not he is going to get the surgery. So it is certainly concerning. It is certainly something that we know Jack Eichel is not happy about, that the team will not allow him to get the surgery because he's confident in it. But you can clearly understand both sides as to why, yes, you would agree with them or why you would disagree with them. But I certainly believe that the best time to trade Jack Eichel would be at this point right now. And I, and I get it. Maybe the value isn't going to be as good, but I mean, you're probably going to get the best value out of a nice trade in the off season instead of trying to squeeze it in more towards the NHL trade deadline. Um, you know, as we've seen in years past with other big time trades that have happened. So, um, you know, this off season is, going to be a very important one for the Sabres. It's going to be a very important decision for Kevin Adams and even Jack Eichel as well as to whether or not he wants out of Buffalo or if he's already requested a trade. But, you know, I keep I keep thinking back and looking back at the end of season conference call that he had with the media and the comments that he made with the disconnect between him and the team and the fact that he was saying that, you know, I'm I'm focused on Jack Eichel and wanting to get healthy and be back to playing, you know, being 100% and the, the key phrase is wherever that is. And then literally two days later, Kevin Adams comes in and he talks about, you know, we want players that want to be in Buffalo. Is he directly talking about Jack Eichel? I don't know. Is he directly talking about Sam Reinhart? I don't know. But, uh, and even Rasmus Versalani gets thrown in this conversation. We'll get to those guys in a little bit, but, you know, hearing Kevin Adams say that also, makes me believe that, you know, was Eichel's comments pretty much a, a non-direct way of saying, get me the heck out of Dodge? To me, it, it I can't help but feel that way to a certain extent. Well, I mean, at this point, too, everything is is a direct shot. You can take it, yeah, knowing what we know and the, and the more stuff that comes out, we, we start to learn that, you know, well, we, you start to read into things and go, well, was that a shot? Was this a shot? Was that a shot? Whatever. And then that really, that honestly, Brayton can bring us to our second of the three big things, more players looking to exit. First, we've got Sam Reinhardt, which uh, <clears throat> best explained by Elliot Friedman, who said, quote, Reinhardt didn't reveal much in his, in his postseason presser. He said, and he looked like he'd rather be eating lit cigarettes. When asked if Reinhardt wanted to say, he replied, quote, I really don't have much to say right now. Going to take some time. Excuse me, that stuff's going to get figured out when the time comes. Now, Reinhardt tied a career high with 25 goals this season. He's a restricted free agent for the final time this offseason. So essentially, best case scenario, he signs a long-term contract extension with the Buffalo Sabres this offseason. But honestly, at this point, we don't know because it, it really seems like a lot of the players who have been here a long time are very fed up with the the, the lack of a direction in the organization. Um, mm-hmm. Certainly the changes. I mean, at this point, this season, it's starting to look like with with Kevin Adams getting the essentially getting the okay to fire Ralph Kruger and and, and bring up Don Granado as the um, the assistant or the not the assistant I'm sorry the interim head coach from an assistant role um, and then obviously we saw the hiring of Jason Carmano so you're like okay things are starting to trend in a different direction now maybe and again I hate to use the Bills as an example but it really it really is kind of like that where the Bills where they give Brandon Bean in the front office autonomy to do what they want and then the Pagulas kind of sit back we've heard a, a lot of stories a lot of rumors. A lot of a lot of where there's smoke, there's fire type of thing about the Bagulas being a lot more involved in the day to day operations of the Buffalo Sabres, which, again, their owners, they have the right to do that, whether that's correct or or good or not is is a different story. But maybe Kevin Adams is going to start getting a little more overall control with with him and Jason Carmanos and they bring in more people or whatever it may be. And they can start to kind of run the show and mold the team the way that they want to go, because clearly from from comments we've heard this offseason so far. They love Sam Reinhardt. They love he stepped up as a leader this year. He was an offensive threat. He played he played center and played it very well. It almost seemed like that was on accident. Um, so it's a situation where he definitely, I think, increased his value if that was even possible because we already know how good of a player Sam Reinhardt is. And, and even if local Buffalo media people, I'm not going to name any, anybody, but I'm sure people can sur- surmise and, and presume here who we're talking about. Um, of local Buffalo people who really just want to push him out of town because he doesn't, Sam Reinhardt doesn't like them because they are just not nice to him or they're rude or they're whatever it is. There's just not a good relationship there um, in, in, in whatever it may be. But Sam Reinhardt is 
was the best offensive player for the Buffalo Sabres this season. And if you have a healthy Jack Eichel and a healthy Sam Reinhart next season on the team, your team will be better. It's just you have to figure out, is Eichel's neck a risk you're willing to take? Um, because at this point, too, not to mention Brayton, if they continue to wait any longer, that rest, that rehab, if he goes and has surgery uh, or whatever may happen, that will start to roll over into next season's uh, camp, potentially next season itself. And you don't want to see that. You want this thing to be finished. You want him to get start working on getting healthier, getting stronger, getting back in game shape because Buffalo needs all the help that they can get at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to unpack just with everything that you just brought up there with Reinhardt and Eichel and, and, and how the future, what the future kind of beholds. I mean, I, I kind of, I mean, I want to, I want to say that it's, you know, just, just to say, know. just to jump in, just to jump in real quick, Brayden, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, no, it's no. very, it's very difficult for me to imagine that Kevin Adams can go through this off season, trade Jack Eichel, trade Sam Reinhardt, look the rest of that locker room in the eyes and say, we are trying to do as much as we can to win hockey games. Right. No, we, no. We I see, we see disagreements all the time. Mm-hmm. These things get settled. If, if the, if the ship has sailed, then you need to move on, but you yep. need to, but it, there needs to be this conversation where you say, look at, yes, we moved on from player X, but we're, it's, it's kind of like how they half asked the Ryan O'Reilly trade and tried to sell everybody. That they were still committed to, Mm-hmm. winning try to do yeah. that but do it the right way this time because i mean we saw in and again television ratings mean nothing in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the on ice product but the tv ratings for the sabers were down people are people appear to be losing interest finally in this team maybe it was just because of the pandemic maybe it was because the team was relatively out of it early and once Ico got hurt people kind of just mailed it in i'm not sure but there's this, we're starting to build that momentum where people are, are, are finally, finally, finally seeming to, to, to take that benefit of the doubt away from the Pagulas and whomever is running the Buffalo Sabres at the time. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, we know they're bad. We know there's their, their, their prospect pool is not, it's not great. I mean, they've got some okay prospects, but they don't really have a direction. They've no. got good players, but what are they going to do with them? Where are they going to go with it? And I mean, yeah. We saw we saw guys like we saw uh, Rasmus Dahlin struggle on and off last season. That was not good to see. Um, I mean, you, we saw the development of a guy like Casey Middlestat. That was great to see. But it seems like for every positive, there's a negative. You know, like yeah, the season started and it was to the point where it's like, should Victor Olofsson even be playing on the first line, even though he scores a lot of power play goals? So then he started to kind of get a little better five on five. So these are the things where you where I think again, it, it's it's all a microcosm of a gigantic gaping issue where oh yeah you have to you have yeah. to get the right coach for the you have to get the right coach you have to have the right leadership you have to have a direction and you have to have everybody buying that you're going in that in that direction it can't just continue yeah. to be the we want to find people who want to play for the buffalo sabers it's like at this point you look at it there are 32 teams there are x amount of jobs per team people want to play professional hockey whether or not they want to play they want to be a buffalo saber or play for the sabers it's professional hockey they're going to want to play so oh, for sure. you, need, you need to figure sure. yourself out and, and figure out what the hell your problem is so that way you can start building the team in a positive direction. Because at this point, again, I don't know. I don't know what the team looks like next season. I don't know if there's don't any possible way they can go out this off season and, and make them a playoff team. It might be one of those accelerated rebuild attempts again. Who knows? I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, to, this is very long winded. I apologize, but it's, it's just like oh, it's okay. you start to fall down that rabbit hole and you just don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're all falling in a rabbit hole, and there's it feels like there's no way of digging out of this rabbit hole. I mean, I I look at the foundation of this team, and I think that the one thing that has been very bad, especially over the years, is that I don't think the culture of the team and 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 I know culture is a big buzzword, but you know the the fundamentals and everything that kind of you know the team stands for has not been there even dating back to the Tim Murray days. I mean, you know, guys were brought in to, to help, you know, you know, to help make this team a better team to help them make, be more talented and try to help them win games. And I'm not sure if there's ever been a firm 
good culture that has ever been kind of established as to what what everyone should be expecting on a year to year basis and and every single year, not just you know oh hey we we should strive for a little bit of improvement here or a little improvement here you know it's just gonna make me sound like a, like a I don't know what exactly I'm looking for here, but when Chris Drury came to Buffalo, he immediately wanted to set a culture of, you know, we're here to play for the Stanley Cup. That's it. He was putting photos of the Stanley Cup all over the locker room, all over the building at Key Bank Center. And the standard completely changed. And the team had two successful years where they made back-to-back Eastern Conference Finals appearances. And then once those guys left, it just seemed like that the culture kind of changed again. And sure, it was a it was, it was a different group of players, but you know at least they were able to have some sort of sustained success under Lindy Ruff and Darcy Rieger's tenure for a few more years, and then that that regime fizzled out, and then it's been the the Tim Murray regime, and then the Dan Bilesmas, and the Jason Bottrells, Phil Owsleys, Ralph Krueger's, and now we're on to Kevin Adams and whoever the next coach is going to be. It the Kevin Adams I think has to find a guy who has a good mindset for what the expectation should be all the time. It's not just on a year to year basis. It's not just on a game to game basis or or whatever. It has to be all day, every day, every minute you're breathing in that locker room or you're in a team meeting or something like that. You have to have good fundamentals. You have to have good habits that are going to, to last and be sustained for a long time. That's going to lead to this team finally getting back to the playoffs and, and, maintaining that success and, and being a, a team that contends for a Stanley Cup every single year. Now, obviously, the team has a lot of work to do there, but if Kevin Adams is really going to do that, I think it, you have to start with the coach and, and finding a guy that, you know, they hope can establish a nice little culture inside the locker room and, and get these guys uh, going to work every day and enjoying the work, but also uh, – you know, just having those high expectations and and holding people accountable and not being afraid to, uh, you know, question people when certain things get out of line and and hold people accountable. So I think that's the biggest thing. And, and, you know, there are, again, plenty of other things that need to be dictated, you know, the future Jack Eichel, the future Sam Reinhart. I think, you know, I I would like to have both of those players back. I would like to have them both back in the long-term picture, but I think at this point, I think that's almost kind of impossible. I think you're going to either have, you know, Jack Eichel come back and still be part of the picture and Sam Reinhart be here maybe one more year and then leave in free agency. Or, you know, Jack Eichel could leave and, you know, Sam Reinhart, maybe then you kind of divvy up some of the money that opens up because of the Eichel trade to Sam Reinhart to keep him here long term. Or you could just lose both of those players and you kind of start rebuilding that way. But, you know, I think that, there are much bigger issues that are at hand here other than just the, the Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhardt controversy. And, you know, they got to get it sorted out because yeah, you're right. I mean, the fans are starting to uh, turn their heads away from the Sabres, turn their attention elsewhere because the team has been so bad for so long. And um, you know, there's just a, there's just a bunch of other factors that has just made the Buffalo Sabres a quite frankly, a laughing stock in the NHL amongst, yeah, not just people in Buffalo, but just people all across the league. And looking at it too, there's one more player we want to mention really quickly before we take our uh, commercial break here on the podcast to pay some bills. Rasmus Ristolainen was asked how he would feel if Kevin Adams traded him. He said, "Quote: I'm fine with that. He has one year left on his deal before unrestricted free agency. To that, I say, no, don't stop." In my best Willy Wonka impression, because at this point, oh, my lord, man, I am. Rasmus Ristolainen in doubt. I don't even. I can't even be mad about him. But at least with Don Granado, toward the end of the season, he kind of started to lessen the role of Ristolainen. But still, man, it's it's. I've never seen a player that I can remember who was given such an opportunity but was so fundamentally flawed. Um, my favorite moment of the season, which I can't pick one because it happened so many times. Rasmus Ristolainen completing a check, looking around to see if anybody noticed while the other team scores a goal. And the guy who scored the goal was the guy that Ristolainen was supposed to be covering while he went out of his way to check somebody into the boards. That has happened more times than I can count. And I am just about fed up with it. So again, Ristolainen, hopefully they find a home for you. 
Well, listen, it, it, it's just so funny because, you know, listening back to Ryan O'Reilly's comments, he made one comment where he said, I kind of lost my love for the game, and he was traded, you know, shortly afterwards to the Blues. Rasmus Ristolainen has said these sort of comments not once, not twice, but three straight years. And somehow people still find excuses and find ways to say, well, Rasmus Ristolainen, you know, there's so much untapped potential with him. You know, he's still going to he's still a good player. And, you know, it's, it just has to start coming together for him. What, what more do people need to see in Rasmus Ristolainen to realize what, you know, he is what he is. He's not going to get better. It, it, I think that he is pretty much going to give everything that he gives as he is shown on a nightly basis. And he's obviously fed up with the losing over the years, as is a guy like Jack Eichel, who's said it for a couple of years. And, you know, he might be out on the way out this season. So, you know, <laughs> with one more year left on his contract, and I mean, that's that's money that you can just free up and – I get it. There's some people that say, well, you're not trading, a, you know, your toughest guy on the team for nothing. At the same point, you open up a little bit more cap space. You know, you might be able to find someone to come in and, and sign on to the roster, or improve your roster in other ways possible, like a trade with another team to bring in another asset to hopefully turn things around in a more positive way. But I mean, I, I just, <laughs> with, with a guy like Rasmus Ristolainen, I mean, if there's any way they can finally move on from him, I mean, I, and this is going to sound harsh, but I do not want to see number 55 on the roster for the Buffalo Sabres with the name Rista Linen on the back of the, uh, on the back of the Jersey next year. It, yeah. it has been three straight years of, of these sort of comments. And every single time he finds his way back on the roster and, you know, maybe other teams know that he's not a good player and, you know, the Sabres don't get what they want. But at this point, with one more year left on his deal, what what are you doing? I mean, don't you dare protect him in the expansion draft because <laughs> because you know exactly what he is. I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly what I mean, to, to, echo there, your, but... to echo your thoughts, Brayton, he's played 542 games in the National Hockey League. He right. is what he is, like you said, to echo exactly. that. I mean, he's he's... You look at his career stats, he has 245 points. 111 of them have come on the power play. He 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 gathers points and droves on the power play. Aside from that, not really. Um, I mean, I'm not, you know, it, it again, is what it is. I think you can replace him relatively easily, um, especially with some guys from Rochester who stepped up this year. Uh, I mean, I just think it's time to just cut your losses and, and, and figure out what you've got going forward from there. Clear up some cap space. I mean, maybe go out and maybe go out, out and way. get a guy. I was gonna say maybe go out and get a guy in a one year deal as someone else, a different guy, and then just trade him for picks or something. But again, sure. there's no way you can I mean, you, if you can, can run find it back. a way to get Seattle to take him off your hands. If you can find a way to get Seattle to take him to expansion draft, by all means, like fine. You got other defensive prospects that you should be protecting over a guy like Will Borg or um, you know, over a guy like Russell in the first place. Will Borgen is the one that comes to mind just because of the fact that he is a right-handed defenseman. He brings that same physical edge that Ristolainen does, but he can ha- handle all the minutes that get thrown at him. He is a workhorse and you know can do just about anything. He can play penalty kill minutes, be a key defensive player, and be a smart defensive player. He's not going to be an offensive threat like Rasmus Ristolainen is, but I think he skates just as well as Ristolainen does. And, you know, I, I, I like Will Borg. I've liked how he's developed in the Sabres organization, and it seems like he has finally started to show to everybody, I don't belong in the AHL anymore. I belong full-time in the NHL, and I deserve my shot. I think he does. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, we will take a quick commercial break here to pay some bills, and uh, we'll be right back with more of the Sabercast here. Uh, I was going to say more of the Sabercast here on the Sabercast, but uh, either way, we'll be right back. And we are back here on the Sabercast. Our third of the three big things here, Brayton, where does Buffalo go from here? We talk about the future looking bleak. Certainly, another rebuild looks to be um, the destination here. It's like that Fast and the Furious meme where you got the car skidding or, or sideways around the bend, and then the going straight will be the Sabres being relevant and another rebuild being the exit ramp. It's kind of where we are right now. I mean, there's a chance they could they can go out and, and, and go sign – 
bunch of guys and, 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 and do another Taylor Hall type deal. I mean, I'm looking right now. Um, oh, goodness. Let's see here. The Buffalo Sabres, according to Cap Friendly, right now have roughly. Well, that's from this season. I'm sorry. Going into next season right now, they have. Blah, 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 blah. I'm scrolling down the page. I'm sorry here. Oh, you're good. Ever. They have a uh, projected cap space. They have 32.6 million projected open with 12 guys on the roster. So um, there, there could be a lot of changes to be made. Obviously you got to pay Casey Middlestat, Rasmus Asplund. You've got, um, you got to wonder what they're going to do with Cody Eakin at 2.25. Um, again, R- Reinhardt's a restricted free agent. You've got a POSO with two years left after once the season rolls over, is he bought out? Is he brought back? You've got uh, Ristolainen and Colin Miller going into the final years, final years before uh, unrestricted and uh, Joki Haru uh, and Will Borgen in their final years before they're restricted free agents. Um, you've got Carter Hutton, uh, who's going to be a UFA, Linus Allmark, who's going to be a UFA, uh, Uko Pekalukinen, who has one more year before he hits restricted free agency for the first time. So uh, again, there are, and then you've obviously got Jake McCabe as well, who hits unrestricted free agency this offseason after a uh, devastating knee injury during the season. So again, a situation where there's a lot of faces that could be changing, a lot of names that could be changing. But again, if you, if you bring back the, the same core group of people, like I don't, I don't understand how you can, because my best thought here, Brayton, and I'm just thinking out loud here, but my best thought is that Seattle probably takes Colin Miller. Unless you spice it up and give them something else to take someone else off the books, they're mm-hmm. probably going to take – my best guess would be they'll take Colin mm-hmm. Miller. Um, yeah. I, I don't see – I don't see really anybody else that on this roster that would be unprotected that would be uh, attractive. So that would be my best guess for them, for the Buffalo Sabres uh, in, in the draft um, expansion draft itself, but looking at unrestricted free agency, honestly, if I just sort by goal scores, um, you've got it looks like uh, Ovechkin's a UFA, he's not going anywhere. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog's a UFA, he's not going anywhere. Mike Hoffman, um, he scored 17 goals this year, he's he's a UFA. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, you can go out and do there. that, but but again, that would be a one year. Would would Hoffman be willing to sign another one year deal on a team where I mean maybe he goes out and scores a ton of goals and can do something? But uh, again, you've got you've got a guy like Alexander Wenberg who scored seventeen goals. Brandon Saad scored fifty goals. I mean, there are guys out there, UFAs out there who can score goals. But you got to make sure. <laughs> like my my fear would be, I think we're going to go pay a guy like Ryan Nugent Hopkins to come to Buffalo because he's a big name and he'll fill a role and that'll be great. Um, like they'll go out and trade Jack and then they'll go end up getting Ryan Nugent Hopkins and then just pretending that everything's okay. And they'll just run it back. And mm-hmm. th- those are the kind of things that worry me because those are the kind of things that we've seen in the past. And, and, and from, from the looks of it in the past, that's how things work in the future with this organization is they love to do the same stupid things year after year, mm-hmm. like give Cody Eakin a two point, a two year deal. Yeah, and he's he's literally one of the worst fancy stats. They're the analytical players in the league. He's one of the worst in the league, well, hands down. Not, His line was one of the worst in the league. So again, yeah. you you see those things and you're like, yeah, they could go out and get Ryan Nugent Hopkins, but would they? But but then again, they yeah. went out and signed Taylor Hall, and you know that yeah. worked out well, the way I mean, that did. Not, so let's also not forget the bad contract that was given out to Zemgus Gergensen over a yep. guy like Johan Larson. Um, I mean, I'll just I'll digress from that point. But yeah, I mean, looking at the free agent class this year. There is absolutely no reason to spend stupid money this year on, on really anybody in this class. I mean, are you going to give money to Tyson Berry to be a right-handed defenseman for your team that, you know, um, he was fairly inconsistent with Edmonton and, you know, hasn't really found much of really any consistent success maybe since his days in Colorado? I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, Dougie Hamilton is probably going to command a big payday, but he's probably going to stay in Carolina. I'd imagine that the Hurricanes would like to hold on to Dougie Hamilton. Plus, you can um, never sign it. You can never sign a guy named Dougie. Like, who's a grown man who's <laughs> called Dougie? Right. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm I'm looking at this class right now of free agents, and nobody really 
speaks any volumes as to being attractive. I mean, Philip Deneau maybe, but is he going to make free? Is he going to make it to the free agent market? Alex Wenberg, like you mentioned, is he going to make it there? Um, I mean, it is stupid season in the NHL when it comes to free agency because teams decide to give some of these players these longer term contracts and they end up being bad deals and, and you get stuck with it. I mean, you look at a guy like Kyle Oposto, who the Sabres have, you know, held on to for several years and they could easily buy him out and suffer the consequences for a few years. But, it, you know, this team has never had really a history of buyouts ever since using the compliance buyouts on Airhoff yep. and, uh, and, and Billy Leno. So I, I just, I mean, it's a situation too, where you look at it and it's like, they continually make the same mistakes. They did what they, what happened with, um, what happened with Matt Molson happened with Kyle Oposo will happen with somebody mm-hmm. else because again, they just think that they can throw money at the problem and they can't. I mean, that's just the long and the short of it. There, there's no way that they can do that. So, um, mm-hmm. they got to figure out a way, excuse me, they got to figure out a way to make this, to make this work because at this point it's, it's not, it's just not working. And, uh, I mean, you look at it and you wonder, you know, maybe they'll get it right, but I, I've got little faith in, in that. Yeah, I, and I mean, and and let's let's not forget here, it's it's tough on a guy like Kevin Adams because when he was brought in to replace Jason Bottrell, he had zero front office experience as a hockey operations any any per, as in, yeah. in the hockey operations department. He was brought in to be the general manager and literally was thrown out, you know. He, he was thrown in the fire and left out to dry. You know, I know those are two different, you know, cliches, but still just, and there were the times where, oh, well, I'm learning from other GMs. I'm calling and asking questions and they're all nice and happy and, and very friendly and helping me out. Yeah. Well, once the season started, they just want to sink you and do everything they can to take advantage of you. And from here on out, that's pretty much how it's going to be. You might, Every once in a while, have a conversation with another GM, and they may give some pieces of advice. But I mean, you're no longer a first time GM. Well, you are a first time GM, but you're no longer a rookie GM anymore. You're, you know, you have that experience now. And now it's time to learn that, oh, hey, um, I can't necessarily go out and talk to other GMs around the league and get their advice. That's partially probably one of the reasons why they brought in Jason Carmanos as a guy who has a long history of being in front offices in the NHL and being in the hockey operations department and scouting and, uh, you know, just learning, you know, how to conduct themselves with trades, waivers, free agency, whatever. And I think it's a good hire for the Sabres. And I hope it really works out for Kevin Adams, Jason Carmanos and the whole organization. But (laughs) I mean, there's just so much more that this team has left to kind of put the pieces together and, I think the best like way to explain it, Brayton, is that we're all just jaded because we know yeah. we, you, yeah. you know, fool it's me like, once, shame on you type of thing. Fool me twice, yeah. shame on me. And it's, it's fool me 15 times at this point because we've spent so much air time, so much, so much typing time, so much writing time, whatever you want to say. That was a really weird I mean, way to say writing, like, but it feels like we, we know that they're putting together a 100,000 piece puzzle and they've got p- pieces missing everywhere and they can't find them. Yeah. And they're too dumb to figure out that they're just under the, they fell off the table or something, you know? Right. That's they're the on problem. the coffee table. Exactly. That's the problem for, for lack of a better explanation. But uh, looking ahead now to the off season, Brayton, a couple big dates to pay attention to. First off, July 17th. Um, now that the draft lottery is over, we're looking toward the draft expansion list deadline for the Seattle Kraken. That happens July 17th. On July 21st, the Seattle Kraken, excuse me, excuse me, goodness gracious, I'm sorry. The Seattle Kraken expansion draft takes place on July 23rd and 24th. The Buffalo Sabres will lead off the 2021 NHL draft. And then free agency begins July 28th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So a lot of hockey happening, a lot more opportunity, Brayton, for myself and and you to discuss the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to start off on the right foot this offseason um, because I I feel like we, we did not do a very good job. But, it, you know, it's... <laughs> It happens. The Sabres weren't good, and there was no reason for us to talk about them not being good because everybody was talking about them not being good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, it's unfortunate. I, I appreciate you taking the time. It was nice to catch up. Always nice to catch up with you. Um, with that being said, Brayton, 
We are the Sabercast. Oh, and you are not. We will catch you sometime very soon. Before we go, I want to remind you. I am at Ryan, or I am Ryan Wolf. I am at Ryan Wolf. I am Ryan Wolf at Wolf BLTD on Twitter. Brayton is at BJ Wilson WGR on Twitter. Um, you can check our stuff out there. More to podcast coming soon. Um, I kind of just ended this one really quick. I'm sorry. It just kind of rolled that way. But um, <laughs> we will talk to you very okay. soon. Many promises. We will talk to you very soon. Thanks again for listening and everybody. And uh, I guess go Sabres maybe. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.